Hello all YouTubers, I am the Weather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for tuning back into this weather discussion for April 29th, 2020. Okay, today we're going to be talking about climate change, global warming, kind of explaining it to you guys, kind of how it came together and the effects it's having on us now and potentially the effects on us through the future. All right, so consider sticking around for the whole video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share my videos. And if you haven't already, like I said, ASAP after watching this video, please con please consider checking out my 2020 summer forecast located right there on the top right of your screen. And also, all right, so climate change, it's it's a real it's a real threat. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. And it's had an effect on many of us, as well as more hurricanes, severe weather, rainfall, and that's not for everybody. Some people have had lots of dry times. Okay, it's been getting worse in many other areas all right and well what's the latest hurricane outlook right there on the top right of your screen as well all right so here's some air pollution footage kind of some pictures here to kind of show you and you can see this is one of the reasons why the global warming okay the air pollution rises to the atmosphere it kind of gets trapped in the atmosphere and it's just kind of warming it up here is and the caption actually had was a mayor actually i don't, I don't know where but mayor actually dumped a um, trash on the beach here so again trash is pollution and it sadly hurts wildlife as well because they, they don't know they just get and they, like you see like those um if you buy like those cans of coca-cola and you kind of see like the plastic wrap like those circle things around it yeah the turtles can actually get their necks stuck in those i've actually seen it before it's really sad all right water pollution and yeah, that's another that's another big threat what can we do well one thing is i believe this is a hyundai yes it is um, but hybrid electric cars is one way we can start solar panels as well, as well as hybrid or alternative fuel airplanes, which I believe they're already working on those. All right, so here is the sea level rise since 1880. All right, so the global mean sea level has actually risen eight to nine inches since 1880. All right, and you can see here's the rise, okay, 1880 over here. You can see it steadily rises, but then the, the rate in which it rises, okay, kind of think about it in like that curve perspective, like with the COVID situation here, all right? We kind of have this steady rise, all right? And then the curve starts going up. We start getting worse, all right? So the curve was kind of flat at first, but then the curve starts going up, it starts to get worse. Okay, again, eight to nine, the sea level, global sea level has risen eight to nine inches since 1880. That, that could be locally higher or lower, depending on where you are. In 2018, the global mean sea level was actually 3.2 inches above the 1993 average. Okay, and that is the highest annual average in the satellite record. All right, so the rate not only is the sea level rising, but the rate in which it is rising is getting much worse. All right, again, here's your change in sea level. Like I said, sea level isn't rising everywhere. As a matter of fact, down towards Antarctica, we actually had a drop. We've actually dropped. Uh, zero to ten centimeters in the sea level here. All right, like us, and this is from nineteen ninety three to two thousand eighteen. But take a look at the Gulf of Mexico, okay? And right there, up there, that little spot there, really dark blue. Um, that's probably just off the Mid Atlantic coastline. Okay, we, I mean, the Gulf of Mexico up the East Coast, we've risen ten to fifteen centimeters. The ocean has risen ten to fifteen centimeters from nineteen ninety three to two thousand eighteen, which is about a twenty five year time frame. All right, look over towards Asia. We've had a lot of a lot of ocean sea level rise as well, as well as off the coast of South America. Okay, nuisance flooding is <clears throat> 300 to 900% more frequent than it was 50 years ago. And what do I mean by nuisance flooding? Well, that can be just a rainfall from a quick shower, like especially if you live near a coastal area, rainfall from a quick shower or just like a brief thunderstorm, all right? Or even on a sunny day, okay, nuisance flooding is three to nine times more frequent than it was 50 years ago and you can see even like maybe a storm looked like it came through but not that much rain and we've had some flooding here okay and 40 percent of the u.s population lives in a coastal area that may be vulnerable to sea level rise which is why you know m many people are going to be affected because everyone's like oh relax let's go to the coast people especially in the summertime that's where people seem to go and so this is the Kind of the temperature, how much of our temperature has risen per century here. And you can see the rate will be changing over time. But like U.S. Canada, up towards southern Canada there, we've risen 2 to 3 degrees in Fahrenheit in the past century. South America, 
All right, you've had a nice rise in the temperatures as well, and even up towards Asia, all right, up towards Russia, potentially over three degrees temperature rise per century here. All right, and this the rate could potentially be going up as we head through the next century or two if we don't do something about this. All right. And you can see there's not really any blues anywhere. Like I don't see any, like there is some areas of white. Actually, there is one little blue area right there. Um, but really, there's really no blues on the map. Okay, it's just really areas of white. So some some regions haven't really had a temperature increase, but m much of the globe has. Okay, and that's the threat. That's the problem we're kind of facing right now. Well, what is causing the sea level to rise? Okay, this is kind of like your sea ice extent. But before I get into that. Okay, the sea level rise, okay, global warming is causing global mean sea level to rise in two ways, okay? The glaciers and the ice sheets are just melting away. So that is that is the first thing that you see on your screen there. And the volume of the ocean, actually when the, when the air warms, the volume of the ocean can actually expand outwards, causing the sea level to rise there as well, not just the ice sheets. Yes, because kind of the water kind of expands as the surface temperature kind of grows. Okay, and they, sometimes people might not notice a smaller contributor is that the, the decline in the amount of liquid water on land. Okay, so we're talking about aquifers, lakes, reservoirs, rivers, and soil moisture. Okay, that is a, we're talking about like the groundwater pumping here, that is a third small contributor. So this is March of 2020, okay? You see the sea ice, there's a decent amount of it, okay? We just went through winter, there's gonna be some sea level or there's gonna be some sea ice there, but take a look, this is just about a month later. This is April 27th, all right? Now, some of you may notice to be changed, some of you haven't, so I'm gonna, in case you missed it, I'm gonna show you areas that have changed a lot. All right, so here's March, 2020, take a look up there, all right? And that's actually Russia. Oh, okay, I guess the max position weird, because that's actually Russia up there. All right, we'll take a look at April 27th. It's just deteriorated. There's just nothing here anymore. Okay. And anywhere, okay, all like inside this orange line, okay. If you see anywhere in within that orange line that's not colored in white, that's where your sea level ice or your sea ice is missing. And right? so we have a lot of missing sea ice. And you think, well, it's not that bad. Sure, it's not. Okay, but look at March 2020. Like, look up, look up here towards New Brunswick, Newfoundland. All right, look at this. Boom. All right. Now, like I said, it doesn't look that bad. Sure, it doesn't right now, but keep in mind, we're only in April. We still gotta, we still gotta go through the summer yet. So once you get through summer, a lot of this ice is gonna start to melt away, and then the sea levels start rising, especially through the summertime. Okay, but this is what I really wanna show you, kind of like the long term, or like a midterms here. So this is your Arctic sea ice extent, all right? Now what you see here, that dark gray line, that is your, actually, let me, let me use, I think, I think black would look better. Light green kind of blends in too much. So this is your 1981 to 2010 average, right? And you can see 2012, which is that dark green, that dotted lines here. It was below average January to February. Then we headed closer to average in terms of our sea ice towards April. And then May, we fell a little bit below. Um, and that was 2012. Again, here's your average line. And take a look at where we are now. We're way lower than the 1981 to 2010 average. We're even way lower than 2012. Okay, this is 2020 here. And we had a big drop in sea, Arctic sea ice right there, kind of end of March. And then we just kind of, we're on a little bit of a sharper decline here. You see the latest um, map version here kind of shows a little bit of a steeper decline in the Arctic sea ice. But you can see our levels, our Arctic sea ice peaked right around March. All right, so... Like, that's like the best you're going to be seeing, because that's when our Arctic sea ice actually peaked. And the total extent was was actually 14.8 million square kilometers. So that's a decent amount. All right, so that's all your sea level. That's all your sea ice, and that's how much of it is missing. All right, and that's kind of like your, like your range here. So if you're within this range, you're not that bad. All right, within a light gray area, we're even below that. We're even below that light gray kind of curve region. We're like, we're below that. So that's kind of a bad sign here. We're already getting way below 2012 here. We're below the 1981 to 2010 average by far with the sea level ice here. All right, so temperatures, all right? So January to December, 
1950, and 1960. All right, so we're talking about through the year, this is the 50s, okay, 1950, 1960. All right, now I want you to pinpoint your location, kind of find out where you are. All right, here's your average temperature throughout the year. Northern part of the United States, we've averaged temperatures of 30 to 40 degrees of the whole year. All right, and here's like your northern, like your north central United States into the northeast. We've averaged maybe up, up to 50 degrees Fahrenheit through the whole year. All right, so you, get, you think that's pretty cold. Well, that's counting all the cold winter times. That's counting all the hot summer times. This is if you average every, like every day of the year, took the temperatures of that, and took the averages of them, all right, and through the 50s, that's kind of what we had. I mean, even in the southeast, okay, we were still I mean, decently warm. I mean, we're, we're talking about, you know, 60 to 70, all right, averaging average temperatures throughout the, each year through the 50s. And this, now I'm going to show you 2000 to 2010. Yeah, big change, huh? Like I said, if you don't really notice the change, I will point the changes out for you. All right, so here's one, here's two. All right, so one region that I found that really changed a lot was New Mexico, especially the northern part of the state. Take a look at New Mexico, 50s, 2000s. So we start to see a lot more oranges fill in here. All right, and here's the 50s again. We start to see a lot more of those darker oranges rising up from the south. Trust me, this is changing. You might not notice it, but if you look, there are certainly some changes here in the temperatures. Okay, now we're going to be taking a look at the same map, except this time, let's look at precipitation. All right, so here, okay, is the precipitation, the, the composite average precipitation, again, January through December through the whole year through the 50s. All right, and you, can, and you notice that the southeast used to be a lot, <laughs> like, look, look at the Rockies. Like they like average maybe up to 20 inches of precipitation throughout the year. Okay, that doesn't really count the higher elevation snowfall. Okay, but the Northwest Coast, we've averaged over 60 inches of rain per year, even in the 50s. All right, and even parts of the Southeast, about 40 to 50 inches, as well as the Northeast, maybe up towards 40 inches as well. But look at 2000 to 2010 now. There's a lot of changes in there. Some areas have gained precipitation, some areas have lost. And you can see a lot of areas that have lost precipitation, again, due to climate change. Northwest, actually, yes, the western part of the United States actually tends to lose precipitation, even though their temperature is also rising. All right, but take a look at this. You see how those darker blues up towards Washington, Oregon, kind of, or especially Oregon and California, those blues start to fade away here. All right, and those yellows kind of start to turn to oranges in some spots. Meanwhile, in the southeast, I mean, again, we just kind of, gotten more precipitation. Take a look at Mississippi here. All right, again, 50s, 2000s. There's a lot more darker blues in Mississippi. All right, so just some areas that have experiencing some potentially harmful climate change, and if we don't do something to stop this, okay, this could potentially grow into a global threat, another global threat, like we don't need another global threat disaster right now. So just that was just kind of to kind of explain global warming to you, kind of understand its effects here. So thank you for watching. Share this video with your friends and check out those videos on the left side of your screen. I am Dweather Dude, signing off. Till next time. Thank you for watching.